Hi, I'm Agus Hardiman, and in this video, I will reveal a mixing secret, which is how to balance a song without even listening to it. You may be think that I'm crazy or this is just a clickbait video, but it's not. So stay tuned until the end of this video. Why I make this video? Because I get asked a lot in my other channel, Atsunika. They ask, what is the volume of, for example, the vocal in decibel in a mixer of the AW software? Or what is the volume of the kick, snare, guitar in a mix? Usually, I answer them with saying, there's no way you can have a certain number of decibel because it depends on the raw data material and depends on your taste and the music genre so you have to use your feeling but the more and more I think about this finally I find a solution the benefit of using this video secret is that you're going to be faster in mixing a song for example Usually, I spend like 6 to 8 hours to mix a song. When I apply this technique, I finish it only just uh, like 2 or 3 hours. So, it helps you to mix faster. Okay, let's dive in. For this video, I have downloaded a multi-track from Cambridge Mixing. This is the site. So, I just download the random files random song and my speakers are off yeah. and I don't use my headphone the, the song data has to have a clear track names you can order the track from drums, bass, vocal, guitar, etc. like this just choose one point of a song for example I'm going to choose the last chorus I don't know which one is the chorus but I pick this and you go to your DAW software mixer and find the stereo out or master out and insert the view meter I'm using one from Waves but you can download the free one MV Matter 2 uh, the link is in the video description so this is the important point when you mix a song every track has an energy and how to measure that energy we can use this view matter I have mixed many songs using this technique and I have come to the conclusion about what I think is the energy of each track. For example, the kick has uh, its own energy and the snare has its own energy too. If you mix a lot of songs, at the end, you have your average energy of the song. But first, you have to calibrate the output of the song to a certain number. I just use minus 18 dB full scale or it's a 18 decibel headroom so when you play the song without even listening to it yeah the needle have to be on the zero position you have to make sure that the overall volume of the song is calibrated to 18 decibel headroom if I play this song the needle is far away or it's too much what I do is to turn down the volume of each track I play it again and changing the fader which I have linked
of course you cannot get the exact zero divisible point because the song haven't been compressed yet but you have to make sure that the needle is staying in zero db few meter like this so there is the 100% energy of the song next thing you have to know the energy of each track so this is what i call a mixing energy every tracks in your song have its own energy when you using view meter you can look the bottom of the view meter this one it is the energy of the song but uh, the top one is the decibel or the headroom yeah, or the calibrated system you don't have to worry about the decibel but you have to look to the percentage which is the energy of a track for example i have my own ingredients for energy for a pop song or a pop rock song the kick i usually use the 30 percent energy so this is all about what i call a mixing energy so you have to solo the kick and play it and see the view meter it has to be in 30 percent it goes only 20 percent so i move the feather a little bit Yeah, that's it. So I have my kick energy in 30%. Actually, the number is not important. You have to find your own number. You can open your song which had been mixed earlier and you satisfied with the mix and you can put the few meter in a master channel and then just solo the kick and you can see the percentage of the kick it could be 30 percent like me or maybe 40 percent 25 percent it depends on your taste next i'll go to the snare for snare usually i use the 20 percent energy i just solo the snare track and play and make sure that the needle is 20 percent yeah it's done next for high head i usually use five percent of energy yeah that's it next i will go to the toms yeah for toms you have to make sure that you play it from the toms part yeah because toms part is not played uh, every time yeah maybe in this position Yeah, that's uh, too much energy for the tom. For toms, I choose the thirty percent energy. Okay, next overhead.
Yeah, I just the twenty percent drum room. In my personal experience, is only like ten percent or five percent. That's it for the drum part, and now go to the bass. I usually have thirty percent energy of bass, so it's the same with kick. Kick is thirty percent, and bass is thirty percent too. But you can choose different setting. For example, if you like to make the kick up front, then the bass maybe the bass will have twenty five percent or just twenty percent. But you get the idea. The next thing is the lead vocal, which is most important. Usually, I make this like sixty to eighty percent. Because vocals are very dynamic, yeah, maybe there's a peak or accent or the transient is way beyond the sixty or eighty percent. It's okay. It will be compressed later, so just just a volume which goes in the range of. Sixty to eighty percent most of the time. For backing vocal, I choose lower than lead vocal, like forty or fifty percent. But you have to make sure that you play it when there's a backing vocal part sings, because I don't hear it, so I just see the waveform. For acoustic guitar parts, I just like twenty percent to thirty percent. For the electric guitar, if this is the important part, I just about thirty to thirty-five percent.
That's it. So it's very fast to balance a song because you don't have to listen it over and over again. So it saves time. The next thing to do is to panning those track. Yeah, for example, the hi hat is on the more to left yeah, because it's a drummer perspective. Tom, I put it more to the right. Lead vocal is always the center. Backing vocal, there's a two track in this song, so I made it uh, more to left and more to right. Yeah, it doesn't matter how much the left or right panning, you can adjust it later when we hear the song or listen to the song. And for this electric guitar, I make it hard left and hard right. Okay, that's it. Let's listen to the result. So this is the first time I listen to the result of the song. So, what do you think? It's faster to balance a song with this technique. The point is you don't have to memorize my setting, but you have to find your setting because it's your music and your taste. That's it. I hope this video will help you to get better sounding mixes. And if you think this video helps you, you can share it to your friend and don't forget to subscribe this channel. I'm Agus Hardiman. See you in the next Mixing Secret video. Bye.